Okay, so good to welcome you to New York City, my brother. Yeah. You're in good company with Joe Thank Biden you. and Paul and Gloria, that's for sure. And um, in the audience, uh, welcome very, very much to Conversations. The guest of the program for this, uh, the guest of the uh, series for this program is um, Burton Aldrich, and he's billed as a medical marijuana activist, also a, a, a patient. patient patient also in some cases and uh, we're here talking with him here on the first of November and uh, Burton uh, Bert welcome very much to conversation thank you great pleasure you're in good company as I said with Joe Barton great guy and Paul and Gloria and others and everything but I wonder if maybe you could share your own background born and raised and I you said to me as before the camera was rolling you'd read many 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 <laughs> many many books and so yeah. forth so well, some was, of your education either autodidactically or, or okay. officially academic yeah I grew up um, in the Catskill Mountains in New York State mm -hmm. uh, a sm small farm my grandfather had a farm and then a religious leader had come and so he had shut down the farm to a small part mm -hmm. and so it was a very close religious community too as well that I grew uh -huh. up in um, and up there being way out in the country and not much to do uh -huh. I had five older brothers one who took the time and taught me how to read so um, when you I didn't go to public school and I did go to public school yeah um, uh -huh. but something about books just you know there's a whole Another, you know, you can you can open up a book right. and you can just be carried away Isn't it to true? a faraway land. You can you can be anything, anywhere, anybody, it, and it just invokes something in me that I have always right, loved reading. Right, good for you, and you're naturally intellectually curious about things. And there's a great no, there's a great deal to know. Yeah, I make a joke <laughs> because particularly if you get into the nuance of all the specializations, it's a huge world of knowledge and understanding yeah. and everything. But you're, you've been so. Do you know the term autodidact? Um, That's a term, if I may, that says oh, self-taught. Okay. You're teaching yourself, like a fox running down and a, a hound running down the fox, yeah. because they're really interested rather than doing something in a rote way that much of the educational process seems to encourage. So that they'll well, have a lot of client workers and yeah. so forth. Yeah. It's, be it's better to educate by bringing out what's naturally within a person okay. than try to force them to believe something they don't already. In the course of all that reading, did you gain a f philosophy? Were there people that inspired you, Gandhi or Martin King or uh, people, Aristotle or something? Do you have a, 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 <laughs> a template in terms of intellectual understanding of the universe, your place in it, and human society within a larger context? Do you hang your thought patterns <laughs> and your philosophy upon? Uh, philosophy was something um, interesting growing up in a church. Philosophy was a bad word. Okay. And uh -huh. after my injury, I went to college and was taking a class in philosophy. And my brother said, watch out, that it doesn't lead you astray. Uh -huh. you and it took me a couple hours of meditating on what would lead me astray about philosophy, well, which is the study of truth study of truth, yeah, and knowledge, and also that you can, might include in that things like science right. that does not always comport with some of the ideas that you're asked to accept within the name of religion or philosophy often, right? right? Yeah. yeah, so that's it, the revealed truths and that's So, sort of you know, it's something that, that um, raised my own mind, that, that, that ability to think for myself, and it's something being raised, I think, very conservative mm -hmm. and the idea that we are sovereign m people that's you know that's something that I, yeah. that I inherited from my father and my yeah. grandfather that that you know we are independent mm -hmm. we don't have anybody else to blame we can't blame anybody else uh -huh. it's ourselves and up to us to make our own destiny and to make our life. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men should be a women are created equal that they're endowed by their creator which comports with the notion of a uh, religious view of the universe and so forth, uh, with una certain unalienable rights. Right. That among these are life, liberty, and originally it was property, but also it came out to be uh, the pursuit of happiness that our founding fathers, coming out of the Scottish Enlightenment, had uh, influenced our founding fathers. And you're, you're, you're tied into that view of uh, the importance of the Constitution in terms of setting up the social organization of society? Yeah. Okay, good. <clears throat> I heard you say uh, you had a religious background. Your father had taken religious attack on things and so forth. Did it influence you? Um, well, I grew up in a very, like I said, a very close religious community. Okay. Um, almost cultish in a way. What, what town were you in? If Hobart, I or 
Hobart, New York. That's near Woodstock or no? Uh, no, it's the other side of the Catskill Mountains. It's over, over out, in out, farm, out, out Delaware, Delaware County. In out the past farming. Highway 28 somewhere? Yeah. Yeah, out, out past Phoenicia and all that. Margaretville and yeah, Margaretville, Oneonta yeah. and that Oneonta, area. Oneonta, yeah. It's more right. of a farming community up there. They were uh -huh. Delaware County had the largest uh, quotient of dairy farms, I think, in New York State really? at, yeah. the, at one time. Yeah. Um, they make beautiful, from Paula, I say they make beautiful raw milk that you yeah. get from there and so forth. Yeah. And she's uh, involved with that kind of thing uh, and everything like that. And then you took education. You took some academic training or you just taught yourself is what I'm getting at in a sense. Uh, um, well, I went to school, but, you know, I mean, it was... Did you go to university? I mean, I, take a After my injury, I went to uh, university, um, huh, Ulster... Uh, community College. It'll be in Stone Ridge. Ridge. Yeah, in Stone Ridge. You're right. Uh -huh. And I got a two-year degree in architectural and computer design. Okay, that's interesting. You took toward architecture. Yeah, it was something, I mean, building has always been a love of mine. Okay, yeah. Um, uh -huh. you know, creating something. It's the, it's the queen of the arts, it seems to me. In terms of the built environment, <laughs> it's the queen of the arts. Architecture, certainly on the art side, although you have to know all this, you know, yeah. the questions of stress. It's mixing, it's mixing it very much mix, art yeah. and design in with technical. Um, yeah, and you were involved in that. You've mentioned a couple times, and perhaps that's the thing we're majorly going to get to, your accident. You had an accident, you were in good physical health as when you were a youth and all of that, and then you had an accident, as I understand, in the swimming pool? Yeah, when I was 36 years old, um, uh -huh. at the time, let me see, I had five children. Uh, you had five children? Yeah, so had you, five you children. Were married, okay. Mar I was ha yeah, at the time I was married, uh -huh. five children, four girls and a boy. Okay. And uh -huh. that spring I had put a swimming pool in my backyard. Right. Um, dug it out, worked on it. A whole family had built it together. It was ceramic and so uh, It was an above ground pool. Oh, above ground. Okay, um, yeah. Uh -huh. And then one day, on July 7th, I came home from work. It was a 90 degree day. Good to get in a pool. Right? And I, all I wanted to do was jump in that pool. Right, dive right and in. And I right? dove right in, and there was a kid on the other side, and I thought I'd grab him under his legs and yeah, surprise yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, right. And I miscalculated. Instead of doing a shallow dive and on the bottom, right. I hit my head and uh -huh. immediately knew that my life was changed. Wow, what happened? It, uh -huh. it affected your vertebrae or something? Yeah, like it crushed C5. C5. Uh, I think there's uh -huh. 10 fractures in all on C5. Wow, okay. But the main thing is, is the, the, the large part of the vertebrae broke in half uh -huh. and came in and crushed oh. the spinal cord. Wow. Leaving really? me a C5, which was... Were you rendered immovable at that, at that moment? And did you uh, I ended up drowning. Hospital? I ended up drowning. You, dr you drowned? Yeah. Okay, then, because you could not bring yourself to the surface. I, right, I was, I was face down and I and couldn't... And the fellow whose legs you were going to grab didn't realize you were in distress or something? No, they thought I was kidding. Faking. Faking. Yeah, yeah, right. You know, yeah, right. Joking around or having fun. So you drowned. Uh, officially you were drowned. Did you have to get a pulmonary? My, my ex-wife had to uh, give me mouth-to-mouth -mouth and CPR. And brought you around. And brought me around. Were you in pain? Or were you conscious and were you in pain at that? Uh, the only thing I remember was breathing in the water and everything being dark. Right. And then the next thing, my eyes opening and seeing my kids. Yeah. And uh, yeah. You were, were you in pain? No. No, you weren't in pain. You were taken to the hospital, obviously. Yeah. Where, if I may? Uh, Cooperstown, Bassett. Cooperstown. Co oh, you're up near Cooperstown. Yeah, Bassett, that Marginal way, up there, right. Yeah. Yeah, excellent hospital, wonderful place. I had okay. the one neurosurgeon uh -huh. who wouldn't operate immediately. What, would not? Would not. Okay. He asked me my opinion. He right. asked me to check with other doctors. You were cognizant and conscious. You weren't overwrought with pain or anything. Uh, they had me, on morph they had me on morphine, but I mean, yeah. I, could, I could make some decisions. Okay. Uh -huh. But, um... I chose not to have an operation because every time you fuse a vertebrae, you lose movement. And I would think. Yeah. You also have problems, complications with the right. screws and things right. loosening. Right. So I chose to be in a halo for four months. What is a halo? A halo is, it's pinned uh, with four prongs into your scalp. Uh -huh. They're screwed in and mm -hmm. held. And then it's strapped down to your chest. So your neck and head are totally held in situ. Yeah, yeah, without moving. And then that then fuses again And then the vertebrae, the, vertebrae, the, the calcium regrows right. on the bone and uh -huh. welds the bone back together again. I see. So by the end of four months, um, my bones had fused well enough together uh -huh. where I was able to take the halo off. Uh -huh. And then taking the halo off... So you had off, to stay in one position that whole while? 
I couldn't move my head. Couldn't move your head for four months, did you say? Right. That's a serious thing. Yeah. Were you in diff Were you in, in discomfort or pain? Yeah, it became. It began to get very painful as it got looser. Mm -hmm. The apparatus was tightened in, mm -hmm. um, but it would loosen over mm -hmm. time, and it would get very painful as it would shift and. Mm -hmm. Right. Did you ever have second thoughts of maybe you should have done that surgery or not, or not? Maybe that's the side I, bar issue. I did because I was in a rush to get home and try to fix my marriage, which was breaking apart. Oh, dear. But Where? my neurosurgeon said, do you like the way you're moving your fingers? Yeah. Uh -huh. Do you like what you have? Right. If I operate, you could mm -hmm. lose that. Okay. Yeah, well, that's a hard decision. And yeah. he said, your wife will be there or not in a month. Yeah, right, right. You know? It's a hard thing when you have so. a life-changing experience. I'm terribly sorry you had that. That's a sad uh -huh. thing. How long ago was that? Uh, Eleven and a half years. Eleven and a half years. Yeah, I'm terribly sorry that you've got that discomfort that you're imbued with. And one of the things that we want to talk about here is the uh, how do you deal? You have now uh, chronic pain, is uh -huh. it fair to say, from this? And you're in the, are you in the um, uh, advisory, are you in touch with an ongoing way with a medical doctor yes. that is advising you and so forth? And do you have confidence in the doctor? Or how do you feel in terms of that? The doctor, uh, unfortunately, when I first mentioned marijuana, mm -hmm. he said, what's that? Mm -hmm. You know, so it, w it was totally something that he wasn't familiar with right. until I mentioned Marinol. Uh -huh. And as soon as I mentioned marinol or dronabinol, he uh -huh. was like, "Oh, oh, I, I, I know that." Uh -huh. So, yeah, um, it's not, you know, he just wasn't educated right. into marijuana because you know it's not something they're taught in college. It's no. not something they're that they're put in front of them. Perhaps to learn unfortunately, about. very unfortunately, yeah, right. very unfortunately, yeah, right, right. But okay. the doctor, through the years of working with me, yeah. is now prescribing me THC pills in an attempt uh -huh. to somehow alleviate the pain as best the as he can. The same doctor who's been your ongoing doctor? Yeah. He's been with you for the whole 11 years? No, he hasn't. No. More no. recently? More recently. Uh-huh. And before that, when you first got out of the hospital, you were in, a, a, in attention with medical professionals? Yeah, I was in Helen Hayes for seven months. Seven down, months. Mm, down Westchester County, or right. Rockland County. Right. And then I moved up to the Northeast Center for Special Care uh -huh. for six years. Where is that? That's in uh, Lake Katrine, New York, right near Kingston. Near Kingston. And okay. that's, that's a, a rehab center set up to take people primarily with head injuries and to rehabilitate them and get them back out into the community. But mm -hmm. it was set for, you know, anybody with an injury that that really shouldn't be in a nursing home. Right. That that was something that was well suited to your particular situation, was it not? Yeah. It it was. It's and much did better you have than a nursing home. Confidence in the treatment or the advice and the uh, prescriptions that they uh, gave you there. And then when did you get in touch with your current doctor? Um well the problem there is that you know, once again, marijuana wasn't an option. Right. But I was able to get on Marinol at that time okay. for a period of time, but they couldn't keep me on it because of the cost uh -huh. to the institution mm -hmm. was $1,400 a month wow. okay. for the Marinol. Okay. Now, I don't know from Marinol, but I want to find out and so forth. But I was just trying to get a grounding in terms of the established medical yep. canon, right, and people that represent that and so forth. And then you did bring it up uh, sort of in a sidebar way that you mentioned marijuana. The doctor didn't even know what you were talking about. He apparently hadn't been to Woodstock and yeah. so forth or hadn't watched the newspaper because yeah. marijuana has been around, I think, for 5,000 years. And, espe and especially because he's, he's an Indian doctor, Hindu, you know, okay. it would seem, you know that's been... And they might have tried there Soma. For, they might have recognized it as yeah, Soma. Yeah, some ganja or Rig Vita, Veda, yeah. I think, you know. Because it's been around as a curative thing for a very long time, and there's more evidence. But it's also been part of what was called the war on drugs by a lot of very, very vociferous, uh, you know, people that were doing that, particularly, I guess, Mr. Reagan and also. And then Mr. Rockefeller did that Rockefeller drug laws, and it was very... Uh, stringent kind of view of linking in marijuana with the rest of the pharmacopoeia, mm -hmm. uh, you know, w minus its curative capability. And you're a medical marijuana uh, ad mm -hmm. activist, which is different than perhaps a marijuana activist who is interested in its use recreationally mm -hmm. or for consciousness and for. Well, I'd know, probably be a hemp activist if it wasn't for the uh, need. The, the intense need for medical marijuana. Okay. Because you know, hemp 
hemp to me is much greater than marijuana. Marijuana is just one of the hemp plants. Okay, this, yeah, cannabis. Um, cannabis. Yeah. yeah. So if you could take hemp and grow hemp mm -hmm. again, our clothing would last longer, our paper would last longer, we wouldn't have to be cutting down trees, yeah. we wouldn't be, you know, it's a renewable resource. Yeah, and it was not, grown by our founding fathers, was yeah, it not? Yeah, and it was and part of what yeah. we, it was a requirement to yeah. own land in the beginning of this country. That's right, Mr. Washington, Mr. Jefferson would have if, been familiar with it. If you I'm, wanted to homestead some land, you better be growing your five acres of hemp. Well, they may be growing a hundred acres of hemp, when right. harvesting it with, you know, har what do you call combines soon, yeah. if, if the trend of the society, which seems to be, if I may, help me out, because I'm not real familiar, and man all I don't know, but you do have a whole pharmacopoeia of drugs that are going to um, deal with pain. They must have a whole lot of things that the, phar the pharmaceutical companies have come up with that would deal with pain. You were not able to find something. You mentioned marijuana. Right. Uh, it helps you in terms of dealing with the pain in a very serious and liberating kind of way for your right. consciousness. Important. Yes. Okay. But what about the things that are prescribed by the canon, by the medical professionals? We will give you, well, they got morphine and things, or they got others that are less... Uh, effective of a conscious mm -hmm. or addictive. Yeah, they have other things. They have anti-convulsion -conv medications they're sure. using for pain. They're, right. they're, they're, they're reaching out to every single pill they can think of to yeah. try to find, deal with pain. Um, yes. and, and did they do that with you? You mentioned no, marijuana. No, no, nothing's effective. Oh, nothing no, is nothing effective. Nothing is as effective You mentioned as Marinol. Had they given you Marinol to deal with the pain you were suffering? Or something? They were giving me that. the pharmacopoeia. The Neurotin was what they were trying neurotin to give me. Neurotin is a drug then, right? Right. And I was taking, I was up to 3,200 milligrams of Neurotin. I don't know how much that is. It's, yeah, it's whatever. You know, but I was looking on the commercials on TV and they're uh, saying, if you're suffering suicidal thoughts yeah. and are Neurotin, call us. From pain? Well, just from the pill. Yeah, from the pill. Yeah, they wanted the student. The but the pill is given to deal with pain. Right. And pain is something that you are from, you unfortunately have as part of your life now. Mm -hmm. And most of us don't have that kind of pain. And it's a little hard for us to empathize. We ought to empathize with how, how disabling and how serious, serious, searing pain can be. And you find that the thing that suits you, not the pharmacopoeia of this pharmaceutical or the medical canon, but marijuana helps you in terms of relieving that pain that you would otherwise be suffering. Is that correct? Absolutely. Only marijuana does that? Or yeah. is there none of the other things that they tried to give you were effective in that degree? Everything that I took just doesn't take it away. And with my paralysis, I'm also, um, yeah, yeah. My, my digestion system doesn't work that well. Okay. And all of these pharmaceutical drugs slow that down even more. So that would be a bad side so it's effect. A real, yeah, it's another bad side effect of uh -huh. another reason I can't take um, the pain medications because they really stop up the body. They have these side effects and they can't, you would think they have these drug designers and things, you would think they could come up with something that would be, and then yours is an individual situation, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an idiosyncratic situation mm -hmm. to your being. Well, and so they find, that, like pain, they find that pain can be treated with the morphine and the opiates, right, that's regular pain, but something about this neuro, the neuropathic neuropathy? pain, neuropathy, neuropathy, yeah. it's not, it's not directly touched mm -hmm. by uh, in the pain centers that mm -hmm. they're finding and so that's why they're having a problem they've come um, you know there's just a various list of drugs that they've tried to come across uh -huh. with for pain and the side effects yeah um, you know it's just yeah they have doctors who specialize in that pain center yeah, there's pain management centers there's programs yeah, it must be terrible to have pain because if I get a Charlie horse that'll go away Mm -hmm. I can hardly think about anything. You know, it's a pain. Or if you have a pain that comes in a way that goes away. And the other thing, it's hard to, it's hard. Hard to explain to somebody. Yeah, right. And I don't like, you know, that's one of the things I rarely talk about mm -hmm. among people. People don't know that I'm in pain because what good does it do to mention it to you? And I, you know, do you want to hear me talk about my pain all the time? No. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's something that you tend to just withdraw and keep yeah. silent. And yeah. And then, but if you have to suffer the pain, and then you, f you found through accident or whatever that marijuana 
ease the pain that you were feeling and suffering so with. Yeah. I don't mean to pry. On the first inhalation. On the first inhalation, you had not smoked marijuana or anything like that earlier? As a or? teenager, I had. Mm -hmm. you know. As that whole, all teenagers at that time. Yeah. Yeah. But it's this was, what, 20 years later? Yeah. 18 years later? Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, it was three years after my injury. Mm -hmm. And I was coming back from a sailing trip with a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And I had just taken my dose of pills. And they still weren't kicking in. But they weren't helping. You were in a wheelchair then? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And I was in intense pain. Oh, God. And just chilled. I mean, yeah, yeah, when I'm dealing with cold. pain, I get chilled. I yeah. like, it's just, I'm cold. Yeah, okay. And he was like, you know, I've got this. I got a doobie, buddy. I got a doobie. You want to yeah. try it? And right. I'm like, no, it's not supposed to, you know. Yeah, uh, the you doctors know. had told me. Doctors. You, you had never brought that up with the doctors. That doctor that I hadn't brought, mentioned it to her exactly. You know, I just heard other people talk about and it. And that's the doctor who had never heard of marijuana? No, or no, that later? was another one. Yeah, yeah okay, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> and so I was like, okay, I'll try it. Uh -huh. And as I took the inhalation in, uh -huh. it just, it went in and the warmth just went through my body, huh. taking the chills and the pain away. It, just from one regular... And then when I exhaled, the spasms, the le my legs just went from just jumping, like uh, they have a... Oh, I'm trying to think of the right Spastic? word. Spastic? Well, no, kinetic no, energy, but kinetic, they have a yes. strong kinetic energy in yeah. there uh -huh. that if you just touch it, it's like it wants to jump. Uh -huh. And it just melted. Isn't that amazing? And I realized... One, one hit, and I realized on a marijuana cigarette... That right that, then, everything was That would have been screwed. like a, a, a road to Damascus experience for you, I would have thought, that you had a relief from that. And then you found that, and then you, in, alter, in, in uh, you know, subsequent time, you did find, marijuana is easy to find, you did find that and use that for the relief of the pain. Mm -hmm. Did you take up this issue with your doctor? Again, going back well, to Well, what I did is, as soon as I found that out, I went back to my doctor and I was like, this works. Can you put me on Marinol? You know, can Ma I? Ma or, what and is I, Marinol? Marinol is a synthetic THC that's derived from some chemical that they mix with another one and are able to produce THC. Right. There's an active ingredient, tetrahydrocannabinol, right. which is part of the marijuana. Yeah, it's supposed to be the hallucinogenic part of the marijuana plant. Right. And, um, okay. Mm -hmm. And so um, they prescribed that to me for right. about six months. And what that did is it made um, marijuana work better. Marinol did. Marinol made the marijuana so work better. So what you so found, like, the best thing for you would be marinol and marijuana. Or the oil, which I haven't tried yet. Which well, oil is another I, issue. I would probably yeah. say the oil is similar to the marinol because the marinol is ingested, uh -huh. and so it works more on the body uh -huh. than the mind. Uh -huh. And the same with the oil. The oil is marinol is, made from tetrahydrocannabinol, or is it uh, synthesized? In synthesized. The, it's all totally synthesized, right? And they got the chemical. They understand the chemistry of that and everything. Yep. And uh, yeah, 1939, um, uh -huh. uh, Professor Lloyd of uh, the University of Illinois mm -hmm. um, took hemp oil, mm -hmm. red hemp oil, mm -hmm. and was able to make pure THC out of it. Pure so, THC, okay, yeah. it's concentrating. So, so, I mean, it was something that was studied back in the universities in, in the 30s. Right. But then... And was it, was it in, the, in the literature of the medical canon that there was this um, effect, uh, beneficial effect for human consciousness, in particular pain, in the literature of the, of the uh, medical establishment? Or not? Or that, in that time, yeah, there was. It was? Yeah. Okay, until 37, when they began to put, lump it in with the drugs of choice yeah, the for drugs people who wanted to change their consciousness, and, right? Yeah. That kind of thing. So when you told the doctor this, what was the response? In, to, in the degree you've been in touch with the medical establishment and reading the literature and all of that, uh, what uh, has been the response of the medical community, including medical doctors and so <laughs> forth, but also researchers and drug designers and pharmaceutical people to the idea or the proposition that cannabis and THC might have good and important curative properties, would you say? Yeah. What's been their attitude? Um, well, their attitude is um, just like all homeopathic medicines, they can't standardize it. Homeopathic or, or is, you know other natural has, other natural herbs or things is that you know what they call the standardized dose. Yeah, they mm -hmm. want to be able to standardize it so that you know they can actually prescribe me five milligrams of marijuana. Right. You know. Um, okay. So it takes 
but it's, you know. Yeah. It's no. the dumbing down of America. I'm sorry. You yeah. know, it's like, it's taking my ability to medicate and take care of my own body. Uh, and you, yeah, completely we, putting it in the hands of somebody else and that they're, you know, being vulnerable to their either ignorance or... Um, well, they want to get control over it, right? And yeah. they don't want it to be, well, in this field it's really good, this field it isn't, this may have something else there. And they want to get control over it to get pharmaceutically something that's pure. It's going to have to, if it's going to reach the market and realize profit for them, they have to go through very rigorous tests with the Federal Drug Administration, and they have to have something to prove that the chemical basis that is having the effect on the consciousness is the result of that, uh, right. you know, that rather than something that has been used, the Cadpile and other people who were curative shamans and so forth have used it over the years, it wouldn't be manufactured with such close tolerance to a specific dose that would suit a particular person. They yeah. want that kind of certainty. That's what they're trying to do. And uh, there's, a, there's um, a drug called Sativex, or a company, Sativex, out of Britain, mm -hmm. who are taking the whole plant and trying to make it into a tincture that you would use as a nasal spray or mouth spray and uh -huh. be able to ingest it. But um, in general, they, they, there is this, that would be part of what would be called alternative medicine. Yeah. They had in India, Ayurvedic medicine. Ayurvedic. They have other kinds of things. They have all kinds of uh, mm. acupuncture, reke. They have all kinds of other things that don't fit into the pharmacopoeia or the, uh, the, medical, the medical model for right. health care and health delivery that is depending upon manufactured in the lab with great specific tolerance and certainty of what is being ad addressed rather than the loose standards that might apply to if you just go out and pick something out of the field mm -hmm. or something, right? Right. And you can understand that in a certain kind yeah, of Yeah, and I can't, you know, I mean, even talking around about the hemp oil. Uh -huh. um, hemp oil might be worth explaining if you could. Okay, hemp, hemp, oil, hemp is oil is taking, taking the cannabinoids mm -hmm. out of the plant and extracting. That's the active ingredient. The active ingredients yeah. of the plant and extracting them uh -huh. and then in the form of the oil that's extracted, uh -huh. eating that in pill form uh -huh. and ingesting it. So that's concentrating it? Very concentrating. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, uh -huh. um, so then it is able to get inside your body and, and work from inside out. Okay. At a much higher rate than you could do through smoking. Right. There's somebody named Rick Simpson you'd be familiar with mm -hmm. up in Canada who has gone and used that hemp oil for cure. He claims, and it's hard, I guess, probably because the medical establishment has means by which, like, uh, a new thing is introduced as having good medical properties and so forth. It has to go through tests, and the people uh, that keep the canon on the peer-reviewed journals and everything else seem not to ever accept the idea that there could be a serious study of the possible curative properties of hemp oil that Rick Simpson did by growing it in his backyard and processing yeah. it and having it work. And he claims that there have been something, I think, like 1,500 people in Canada that have been cured from cancers by the use of this hemp oil. It's amazing. What is the attitude of the medical establishment toward that when they say, well, there's nothing in the peer-reviewed journals, but then if you have a situation where the peer-reviewed journals will never test it because it's thought of as being something that's uh, prohibited by some, ca some ethic or something, uh, how do they deal with that issue in terms of the kind of thing that Rip Simpson has presented to the world as evidence of his curative capabilities? Well, it's part of the cover-up and part okay. of the, you know... Uh, cover-up, okay. Cover-up, or just the inability to acknowledge something different from the status quo. Mm -hmm. um, A common know. characteristic of much of human consciousness. Probably. They only let Galileo off the hook about 12 years ago for saying we were not the geocentric center of the universe because it upset people's sense of identity. Exactly. It's hard for people to change. But they don't seem to have uh, any recognition of these curative properties, and yet people are suffering and dying from cancers that might, if Mr. Simpson's evidence is correct, if it's taken seriously, we'd be able to give curative and... Uh, you know, surcease from the pain and so forth right. that these people are suffering and it doesn't happen and it must be very upsetting to people who know that those curative properties do exist in hemp oil. Right. Right? It is. Okay. It's very, it's very difficult to, to uh, 
discuss with somebody. Uh -huh. You know, and the other thing is people can be so one-sided yeah. or very, you know, <laughs> opinionated. Oh you know, yeah. Where they don't allow anybody else's ideas in, and it's right. Very difficult to. But it's very, I find that it's very rare that I can't get through to someone. Uh -huh. um, I've done a lot of on the street um, talking to people. Right. And, you know, I find as people get on, on with life, they're much easier to talk about it because they to have. To talk about outside of marijuana. Yeah, they get outside, older? Yeah, because uh -huh. more and more people around them uh, have used it or tried it uh -huh. because of, you know, one thing or another, yeah. Alzheimer's or. Yeah. Um, and so it's becoming a little bit more prevalent, but also people tend to think more of their mortality as they get older. Yeah, you know, right. I mean, I know, I know myself. Yeah. You know, it's something that gets yeah. very prevalent. And yeah, yeah. That desire to stay young, I think people, you know, as they get older, could be a little bit more open to it. Was it was a popular song for every young, I think. <laughs> you know, with yeah. the spirit of Woodstock. But if we could get yeah. rid of, if we could just get rid of that that stigma, mm -hmm. you know, that it's um, the demon weed. Uh huh. Well, it's that you had that uh, Anslinger, and you had the what was it called? The what was the one? The the film that was so famous, the Reefer Madness. Pardon? The Reefer Madness. Reefer films? Madness and all that yeah. kind of stuff. There was a they had, had prescription of alcohol, or, or you know, for hit prohibition of that, and then it went over into the marijuana, and then went into the other things. Uh, you say cover up. Usually, I think the cover ups. If you trace it back, you're going to find that there is somewhere back there in terms of covering up what might be beneficial to the society in general, in terms of anything, a new idea or mm -hmm. anything. Uh, there's something to do with some economic advantage that somebody wants to protect in a quasi or even a monopolistic kind of way. They have monopoly over the making of medicines and they're making a lot of money because right. of that. Huge. It's a huge industry as we all know and so forth. So do you think there might be, that would be a, uh, a not ethically based uh, argument they would make, and they probably wouldn't make that money. We don't. I mean, that argument. We don't want to let this available hemp oil because it's going to uh, cut into our earnings. They wouldn't say that. They would say that it's some evil property, or it's linked in to other aspects of right. uh, uh, society's use of uh, curative things that we have control over, and we want to keep control over that, like. Lawyers want to keep control over being able to understand the legal process as a specialist. All specialists want to do that, right? right? Do you think it might have an economic component, that cover-up of the curative properties of hemp oil? Um, sure. I mean, as a medi the, our medicine center is created around working with um, symptoms, not the cure. You know, so uh, it's like, okay. you know, yeah. treat, let's, let's treat the symptoms, but you know, don't go in and, and cure the person. That might apply to virtually everything in the human so. conditions. We're dealing with all of the symptoms of poverty rather than curing poverty in a way that we might now be able to do that we weren't able to do out of history. But you've got institutions that are linked into things that bring them or certain groups money and security and a benefit, but not the whole of the society. So that metaphor might hold for the larger organization of Spaceship Earth and mm -hmm. the society that uh, runs it, yeah. Yeah. Including medical marijuana. Right. Yeah. yeah, and goes back yeah. goes back to that you know the fear of change and you know but change is inedible. Every second, everything's changing. Uh -huh. So to hold on to that, yeah, you know, illusion of stability, mm -hmm. it just. Well, you can understand a certain conservative attitude toward not going inordinately along with some uh, idea de jour. Like there were people in Germany who with Mr. Adolf Hitler marched to his cadence and so forth because they had been freed from a situation they'd been in. But it might have been better if they had thought about conserving with certain unalienable principles and so You understand what I mean? Right. It isn't necessarily, uh, change isn't necessarily good. There are changes that aren't good. And there are people, conservative forces, that want to root to history and to make sure we don't uh, go lemming-like off a cliff somewhere. Right which is important. <laughs> yeah, it is. Particularly yeah. now we've got weapons that are species lethal. Oh, yeah. We don't want to uh, cavalierly go and set them off, like right. we almost did in 1962 with Cuba. You know, because it, 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 it's so destructive now that exists now, you see? Yeah. But we get to that. But the marinol and all of that, and then getting to the uh, medical, what, do the, what does the medical profession say 
again, it's getting back to that, about this evidence that you present and Rick Simpson and others present, again, do, they don't say we do it because we're making money or that we got a monopoly we want to protect or something. They would have some other ethical principle. And the marijuana is tied into recreational use, too. Right. Now, you're dealing with medical marijuana, and it has these properties that should be brought up, and it seems to be recognized. They're voting it legally, um, the state of Michigan did. And you yeah. say maybe Ohio, New Jersey or Ohio, and that sort of thing. But they've linked marijuana in with all the cornucopia of drugs in general that affect consciousness, of which there are many, including opium, heroin, uh, all the other things, and the people who moralistically would say we shouldn't allow this to be available to people will say it's a gateway drug. That is, if you smoke marijuana, you're going to go straight to shooting up heroin right. and ruin your life and that sort of thing. What do you think about that? And do they present that well, as sugar, part of sugar their is, rationale? Sugar is the gateway drug. Sugar is? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sure. You know, it's our first uh, taste of something in, uh, that makes us feel good or feel energetic. So. Yeah. You know, to say that marijuana is the gateway drug. Um, they do say that. They do say that, but I've seen so many people um, in later years mm -hmm. that only smoke marijuana. Yeah. You know, um, people may experiment with other drugs right. because of the criminality of marijuana. Right, they you locked know, it. If you, yeah. if, you know, if, hmm. if you got to go visit a friend of yours mm -hmm. and, you know, he hangs out with a bunch of rich people, you're going to be mixed with a bunch of rich people. If your friend hangs out with poor people, you're going to go hang out with poor people. So mm. you, it's the yeah. the stereotype that we put on yeah. uh -huh. it creates a dilemma around people that use it. Uh -huh. you know, and yeah. that somehow needs to get removed. And uh -huh. it's hard because marijuana is so beneficial yeah. that people are like, oh, that's just, you know, it just cures everything. And so it goes from something that's good to something that's unbelievable because of its benefits. Well, there's some people who think anything that's <laughs> beneficial must have an evil side. You know, like you may feel good, but you know, you shouldn't, there's a pure ethic that you should suffer. And you that, should, that's, all of the, that, that and is that's built into a lot of ethics that are existing in the world. And if you're feeling good or something, uh, somebody said somebody's worried, the conservative are worried that somebody somewhere is having a good time and they can't have that because you're going to suffer for it because you're dealing with the devil or something. Feeling good is a dealing with the devil, a kind of men mentality that serves in a lot of religious and other systems. Yeah, I think, well, I think the, the Christian ethic is, is based on suffering. Mm -hmm. You know, the role model of Christ mm -hmm. who suffered and we suffer as he suffered. Mm -hmm. You know, so our consciousness is based around the suffering. Mm -hmm. um, um, how, and how to adjust to a suffering, unjust world order that you must learn to accept as part of being a responsible citizen. Right. You understand what I'm saying? In terms of those larger issues of transformative, positive capability that might be blowing in the wind, as Bobby Dylan said. Right. You understand? <laughs> yeah. Major transformation, yeah. But so that's a problem that they have with um, that. In that gateway, you don't think it's a thing where they can tar marijuana with the evils of uh, mainlining heroin. You know, they'll try to do that. You don't see no, it that. Takes, it takes a certain personality to want to do heroin or, mm -hmm. you know, um, other drugs. You know, it's... it's, it's <clears throat> but um, they've lumped it in on the war on drugs. Right. And the, it seems to be, if I'm not mistaken, just seeing it from, you know, a general distance and everything, that the society in general is now coming to the understanding that that lumping of, on their Schedule One, I think they call it, yep. of the drugs that affect consciousness, lumping marijuana in with that was, in a certain sense, a mistake. Yeah. And we're, we're rectifying that now, do you think, as you look out, California is about to try and legalize it, medical marijuana is being allowed more and more, is being... Michigan, they made it legal for people to do medical marijuana. I think, so in, it's, I think in the city of Detroit, it's coming up from think, where it was. Yeah, right? in the city of Detroit, it's decriminalized. Yeah, completely. Right. I think almost. Um, for the medical marijuana, we want to make a distinction between medical hemp oil and then the recreational mm -hmm. use of uh, smoking a drug that gives an altered state of consciousness, much less any other drug that alters your consciousness. Right. But it's uh. Yeah. I, I think the only way that we're going to recover from this is just through more and more people doing it. You know, it's just, uh, well, we, we, people, people have to be acquainted with somebody and then it's like, oh, okay, he's normal. Yeah. You know, he's not, 
you know, some terrible person. Right. Um, so it's 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 a slow process, but I believe that it's happening. Now you have a, you've used this medical marijuana to give surcease from terrible suffering, pain, and so forth. And apparently, by the fact that you have this, the authorities have come and they've arrested you. Yeah. Am I correct? Yes. And they want to put you in prison because you're using this drug mm. to seize. Uh, to surcease from terrible pain, mm -hmm. and is that more or less correct as part of the thing you're facing now? Well, I don't you want, out they don't want to put me in jail, but they don't have much, I mean, <clears throat> the way the laws are, uh -huh. there's not much of a choice. If I'm smoking and I'm on probation, then if I get caught, I'm going to go to jail. Well, wait a minute. So it's, and so, <clears throat> oh, go ahead. You know, it's a... Uh, it's not a lot of options. Yeah, it's like John Valjean, you yeah. know, and where they just chase the thing. If you break the law, that's it, no matter what the law. But they're beginning to invest it. Aren't they beginning to separate marijuana or THC off from the rest of the, what they call the war on drugs? I mean, it was a mistake to bring that into well, schedule. Well, I know the cops didn't want to. Schedule one. You know, I mean, it's like. Cops don't want to. Cops probably harass. do doobies themselves. Right. They it's don't want to. It's just becoming general. Right. Yeah. More and more people are doing it. It's becoming more and more accepted and more and more okay. That's being done by <clears throat> people who use it recreationally because a drug ingestion can affect the neuro. We now know how the brain works. We didn't know it 30 years ago. Right. We that's didn't a, that's know how, amazing. how the brain worked, and we're learning so much now. It, it affects the uh, serotonin and the uptake. And we're learning how the brain works and what you have a biochemical model for any state of consciousness. If you win the lottery, you will have a certain ratio of neurotransmitters that will be in your brain and you're feeling elated and so forth. And so you have a biochemical model for all states of consciousness from sorrow to, uh, to a a a ecstasy. Right. And we know that now and the drugs affect that, right? It just puts you there. So yeah. we're coming to know that now, right? Right. And uh, what does that tell us? And uh, but, you, but this use of it for medical reasons seems to me to be the front line of trying to get over that ignorance of making it Schedule One and locking up. We've got thousands of people in right. prisons. We built an industrial complex around prison for people who are smoking marijuana, and all they do when they smoke marijuana is eat ice cream. Yeah. And they're very, you know, for by and large, and they're, they're, not, they're, not out there, and they're not out there committing a violent crime. Not I'll tell at you all. That. I don't think there's ever been a death associated with the smoking of marijuana, has there? No. In the whole history the DEA, of the world. The DEA law judge, after three years of study into marijuana, mm -hmm. he found that the only danger mm -hmm. in marijuana to a rat was if a 25-pound bale fell on it and crushed it to death. Where would the 25,000-pound bale yeah. come so from? So, you, you know, you got to drop a bale on a rat. Oh, a bale of marijuana. Yeah, a bale, right. bale of marijuana. Right. You know, you yeah. have to drop it on the rat in order yeah. for it to die. Well, you might be, you might <coughs> get fat from eating the munchies, because I understand it gives a, a great taste. Everything tastes good. Everything sounds good. Music sounds yeah. good. The, well, you, I mean, do sense, I, do the I look? The sensuosity is encouraged. You, do you, I look fat? Not at all. No, you look very <laughs> trim, as a matter of fact. You look good. But you smoke it, but they're actually, and they're locked into a thing where they have to enforce the law, whether the law, the, the law, may, we used to have a thing called the Fugitive Slave Act back in 18, 1852 or something. Slave escapes up the north, up to the Freedom Road, gets up north. Then you had to, if you were a law-abiding citizen, you would take that person and put them back in bondage. And that was not right in terms right. of the movement of history, nor is it right for them to have this attitude toward marijuana and their suffering. Right. The I'm looking bad at that. Do, they, that. do we call those people criminals or do we call them patriots? Well, we would call them liberators. Liberators. Do you have a program last week with a woman who's part of a group in St. Vincent and there were slaves that were brought on a ship back in the early time? And they made a mutiny on the ship. The slaves that were being brought over to St. Vincent, they made a mutiny, took over the ship, and set up their own thing. And I said, they should make a movie out of that. The, huh. the slaves, instead of just succumbing to the slings and arrows of an outrageously organized world society where some people are very rich, other people are poor and suffering always, uh, you know what I mean? So that kind of a thing that they, they would be patriots. Yeah. King George would have hung George, uh, George, George Washington, Washington everybody from the yard on for being a... Uh, a, a rebel and a, and, a, and a traitor. They would have called him a traitor to the legitimate authority then. So if you suggest major change now, you're seen as a traitor because, like Galileo, it upsets people's sense of identity with the social order that's out of date with what the future requires. Right. A major transformation of every institution is required by the future instead of reifying or reestablishing the outdated ideas that we've inherited out of history that's been transformed 
Do you yeah. think we we would live at that kind of a time of a major transformation? We're definitely we're definitely in a time <clears throat> of major transformation. We are. We've we've reached the pinnacle, I think, of uh, um, our search for identity. You know, we, well, the materialism, okay. the commercialism that's been propagating the world culture. Uh, it's it's you know, I mean, our economy should have collapsed last year. Uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's being held together by you know, bailing band wire. aids and bailing wire, and but it's but not still, working. Even it's what not they're working. doing, they're not. They, they they're trying to use the outdated institutions to prop up. They prop up the banking system, and they all still live. And then they're trying to use the banking system to prop up something else. And but it's all, not working. Right. And now we come to election tomorrow. There's an election here in the United States, you know, and so forth. And we got this Tea Party thing and all this stuff. There are people saying there there's something wrong. There's something majorly wrong with all of our institutions, at least that's the product. And uh, so one of them is our attitude toward marijuana. That's right. one of the issues. The other issue is about how are we going to organize capital formation and distribution of buying power and income to people. We have a big change. And our leaders aren't presenting an alternative. They're enthralled to the institutions we've inherited that are out of date. Nietzsche once said, you did a lot of reading. Mm -hmm. OK, that's dangerous to get yourself thinking. But Nietzsche said the future influences the present as much as the past. We're all enthralled to outdated institutions like people like you should be put in prison for smoking a marijuana cigarette, if you don't mind me saying so. Right. I think it's ridiculous that that could have been done and that they don't have the ethical, moral understanding of your situation and others who are in a position such as yourself. I presume you'd agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm still in fear. You know, it's something, um, it's like, well, I had the court case last Friday, but the, uh -huh. judge, the judge reminded my lawyer that if I get caught between uh -huh. now and January 24th, he will send me to state prison. Good grief. And, it, it, and he, you he get caught that. smoking, the only thing, or having, the only thing that is giving you, and it's none of the other drugs work. Some right. people would say, well, just go to your pharmaceutical company. Right, they're saying try all these other things. But it doesn't try, work. You've been through all that. Do you think a lot of people who've been through all that who do benefit from uh, medical marijuana or hash oil or we call medical mm -hmm. uh, that there are people who have also benefited. There are people who apparently, if Rick Simpson, should be investigated by the, by the establishment, right? Instead yeah. of just not even taking it up that they're, they're, they're letting people die and suffer great pain because they won't look at what has been presented by somebody that right. could have great beneficial properties and for some reason you called it a cover up and it well might be presented that way as a cover up of uh, just like everybody, they were working out the orbit pathways of Jupiter to prove this was a geocentric world until 10 years ago by the Catholic Church. Do you understand what I'm saying? Right. They're all enthralled to the past. You think? In a lot of ways. Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> Catholic Church. That's another... Well, that's another institution. No, another institution. We want to root really them. We want to. We want to anchor our institutions to history. That's conservatism. We want to anchor, but we have to subsume them. Yeah, shouldn't the institutions be an outgrowth of who we are as a people? Yeah, but we change as a I mean, people, don't we, Bert? You know, we do. Yeah, we are, and so that's that's the problem with institutions. Institutions don't change well, um, institutions, as quickly. Yeah, as quickly yeah, uh, as they need. Right. That's one of the difficulties. You no, know, they're not adaptable. It? That um. They're not as adaptable, and that's one of the, particularly when the change comes so rapidly. We've been going through this a long 200,000 years of our existence, and the change, the rate of change, is not going, and it's just even hyperbolic now, it's going exponential. Yeah. It's going L-shaped. And we're learning a revolution every day comes over the transom in different fields all over the place, signaling that there's something new needed including all the way from the way the finance is structured and everything, and it's not coming from our leaders, you know? Right. Including people who are concerned with yeah, medical I mean, look at the one. energy crisis. You There's know, another one. You know, we should be so much more forward on hydrogen and solar, and, you know, and we're still looking at outdated models of oil. Well, yeah. uh, yes, but we ought to be, if we're older, well, I'm getting older now, so I'm feeling a little well, back bit Back in more. the 1940s, yeah. they had yeah. carburetors that produced 55 to 60 miles per gallon. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> Before, I was from Detroit. 
Yeah. yeah. For 40 years, that, that knowledge was just suppressed? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm from Detroit, and in my grandfather's garage at 16th Street in Detroit, Henry Ford, when he was about 10 years old, used to tinker in our family garage. Then he went on to establish a great industry of automobiles, and the people who worked on the farm, so everybody knew how to farm, family farmer, that was a major occupation turn in the 19th, 20th century. They've come with combines that can produce enough food to feed the world in Kansas alone or something like that. So the people went to the city to work on assembly lines. But now that process of creating jobs and things for people to do is They're running gone. out. Yeah. Because if you get an algorithm that can disemploy dis a couple or 200,000 people by having real efficiency in market terms, you're not going to be able to distribute the income to the people to buy and clear the market of what can be built. So we need to have an, a whole new economic order, and our leaders haven't come up with it. Our intellectual leaders haven't. And I'm not going to say and the, I'm not going to say this is the whole answer, but I'm going to say it could be a part of the answer. Mm. Is looking at hemp. hemp. Thank you. That would hemp, be hemp, one thing. Hemp yeah. is a very viable option for a lot of these backward farmers who you know have five, ten acres, little gentleman farms. Mm -hmm. um, now you can grow hemp. Okay. Right now there's no um, way to take care of that hemp except for other places. Mm -hmm. But eventually, if you have 20 farmers growing hemp in a 10 mile area, mm -hmm. then eventually they're going to combine all that hemp and bring it to a spot. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to, somebody's going to come up with an idea of, okay, let's take this hemp, put it into paper, build a factory right here. Mm -hmm. We've got the farms, we bring it right here to the factory. Mm -hmm. So now you're starting to recreate our American economy mm -hmm. based on hemp. Well, okay, that would be one thing. You get a lot of silage, you can get everything. You get, I have Paula, she's got a thing on one of her tapes where she's got a combine for, for uh, harvest in, 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 in massive fields covering Kansas, you know. Yeah, 1939, Popular really Mechanics said that mm -hmm. hemp was a billion dollar crop. Yeah, yeah, it was used for silage. That's in 38. And it's a, it's, a, it's a thing that could be used for clothing and everything. Clothing, like Henry yeah. Ford made a car yeah. out of it. Yeah, but I don't think you should make too much out of it because it's not the only thing because it could still, even if they did. And now we've got a Proposition 19 in, Canada, in California is going to be voted. And I understand you're not enti entirely, a, people up in Humboldt County, good people are growing a little hump and spreading it around and everything, are making a living off that. Right. And they think if they make it legal, you'll have a Monsanto come in and grow a Terminator seed hemp and so forth. That's and make enough, a lot of money enough. and keep all the money for themselves and not allow the people to do anything, which would be one uh, perversion of it, which could happen. And a lot of people of good conscience are against that uh, Proposition 19 in California, but... Right. Yeah. And that's uh, well, recreational hemp, mostly. That's concentrated on your yep. thing is particularly medical marijuana. Right. right. Yeah. Which is something that's so necessary, and, and you know, I've been with a lot of arguments on how to get medical marijuana out there. Because with the way our institutions work, you are not if if marijuana was just to be legalized, yeah, in a nursing home or in a hospital, mm -hmm. you're still not going to get your medicine mm -hmm. because it's just legalized. It doesn't have a code. It doesn't have a standard operating procedure. It doesn't have a um, I'm trying to think of a code of... Well, it hasn't been accepted by the canon. Right. Uh, where the canon can keepers are the medical... Where world. if you yeah. do pass mm -hmm. a specific medical marijuana bill uh -huh. that, you know, defines what medical marijuana is uh -huh. and its uses and how, uh -huh. then the medical community could use it. Yeah. But they and won't then, put it into the peer reviews. This is right. the work of Rick Simpson because they're in... Yeah, right. So that's yeah. part of what you call cover-up. Right. That. And so, and, you know, but yeah. the legal... So, I believe in legalization, but I also believe in medical marijuana, that there needs to be something specifically in that way. Yeah, we have to take account not only of the mass considerations of just recreational use, and then other drugs, LSD, they have designer drugs. They're just as uh, Shulkin yeah, so. and people that are, are designers, they can design and have any state of consciousness you want be induced by taking a drug. Yeah, that ecstasy, 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 ecstasy is a designer ecstasy. drug. They keep coming up with other ones, and there's some people who think you shouldn't mess with your state of consciousness. That's another issue, maybe. But it's also, they're, they're maintaining systems that will keep people like serfs in their mental attitude toward the system. That's a major thing that they're doing. They've got to see that... I don't, think that, I don't think you need a drug for that. I think just 
public high school and a job well, they, will, will keep your mind. Well, they're going to undercut the ability to distribute income to people to buy things because the, uh, the as Lord Kane said, there's, there's going to be massive technologically induced unemployment if you keep a market principle. People are not going to have money to be right. able to buy what can be produced, and that's a major problem for our intellectual leaders. The politicians are just reifying the old institutions, and so I think the same applies to mer medical marijuana. Liberation may be at hand in a way that has never been characteristic of history. History is a nightmare of injustice from which we are perhaps uh, attempting to awaken. Uh, uh, I, I, James I, George. Uh, yeah, I was wondering where that quote came from. That's George. It, that's that's George. so apropos. <laughs> you think it is? Do you think we may be, we may be coming, we've got weapons that will destroy the species, and we have a capability of taking care of anybody in an unprecedented capability where nobody has to be hungry, nobody has to be without, everybody could be liberated to lead the life they want, and that could be done within an ecological context given the technology that we have now, and we don't have systems that let us do what we're capable of doing. And that's a major problem that's confronting mankind, one aspect of which is marijuana for recreational use, and particularly medical marijuana mm -hmm. that you bring to focus. And I thank you very much for that. I'm sorry you're suffering the pain, and I hope the feds don't come down on you for dealing with the pain that you're suffering yeah. and have a little empathy and understanding. We only got about a minute or so left. You want to put a few? You have a website. Um, my website's mainly my poetry and yeah. how, when I was in the Northeast Center, mm -hmm. of how I dealt with a lot of the conditions yeah. and my hopes and aspirations. Uh -huh. um, it was very cathartic writing yeah. for me. I mean, it was something yeah. that you know I recommend to anyone uh -huh. who you know. Looking and you for paint, it. I understand too, right? I want about a little bit, right? And write, you write. I like to destroy poetry. canvas. Yeah, <laughs> destroy canvas. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I've seen some of it. It's pretty good. Some of it's yeah. good. Yeah. And you're still living upstate, then? Are you yeah, I just I just bought a house in Stone Ridge. Stone uh, Ridge, that's High Falls. Yep. Right, yeah, yeah. that's a great place to go Gorgeous. skinny dipping. Beautiful. Do they still skinny dip? Uh, they used to do I, it back in the old days. Actually, it's illegal to swim there, but everybody goes there and yeah, swim right. still. <laughs> right. so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you got Woodstock's a great place. And yeah. New Paltz was great. It was a great time. Yeah, I'm halfway between Woodstock and New Paltz. I oh. live right in the center. That's it's, right. I know it so well. I've got my so house. Well. and. You know, I'm paying about $4,200 Look in up taxes. Marshall Pfeffer, he's up there, and Michael Horowitz. There's some really good okay. people. Like I know Michael. You know, know Michael's a wonderful guy. Yeah. And uh, Dee Dee Halleck, do you know Dee Dee? Joel Covell, there's a lot of good people okay. up Woodstock Way. Anyway, we're running out of time, and so I really thank you uh, for uh, coming in and sharing your situation with us. I hope the um, winds of change and everything go in your favor and so forth, and that they don't come up with this ridiculousness of adding to all the <laughs> suffering that you've had to put up with by putting you into a federal prison, for crying out loud, yeah. for having the audacity to deal with the pain that you suffer in a way that makes sense to you and to, uh, that could be picked up on by the world. And I thank you very much for all yeah. the good work. Well, you're welcome, and thank you, Harold. My I pleasure. Good talking to you. Appreciate it. Burton, uh, Burton Aldrich, then, uh, grand old name here in New York State, Aldrich, and he's uh, happy to talk to you about those issues, and we invite you on Conversation Tune, and we'll be coming back again tomorrow. Burton, I enjoy you to stay here in New York. You're going to talk to ACAP tonight, for yes. which we appreciate. You've had a long day today. <laughs> How are you holding up, brother? Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we both need Are we close yet? <laughs> I think we, no, not quite, because yeah. we're still on the scene. We might have to take a cup of coffee or something uh, like that, okay? I'll be ready, I'll be ready to medicate. I okay. know that. That's All one right. thing. A good, good, strong cup of coffee is what we got coming up for you. Okay, thank you for your, we'll be coming back again tomorrow. Okay, I think Shanti's going to come in and